Chapter 13 Attitude Instrument Flying Introduction This chapter is intended to assist the helicopter instructor in further explaining attitude instrument flying in helicopters. When appropriate, refer to the Instrument Flying Handbook and the Advanced Avionics Handbook for the definition or further explanation of a system instrument. Many of the current helicopter instrument systems have been included in those handbooks, however, it is not feasible to include every helicopter instrument system that may be installed in any particular helicopter. Instrument systems on different aircraft serve the same purpose, however, the configuration of the instrument panel and the design may be somewhat different. Ideally, the helicopter instructor will wait to explain this chapter until after a basic understanding of instruments is achieved. Once the student understands the basics, then actual helicopter flights reinforce what was taught in this chapter. This chapter is intended as a building block towards attaining an instrument rating. Students will be taught attitude instrument flying and should apply all of the basic maneuvering flight skills that have already been mastered. Instructor's objective An appropriately rated flight instructor is responsible for training the instrument rating pilot applicant to acceptable standards in all subject matter areas, procedures, and maneuvers included within the appropriate instrument rating practical test standard. Title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, 14 CFR, Part 61, Section 61.195C, states that basic instrument maneuver training for private pilot students and lower need not have an instrument instructor rating, if the instructor has instrument privileges on his or her pilot certificate. Because their teaching activities affect the development of safe and proficient pilots, flight instructors should exhibit a high level of knowledge skill, and the ability to impart that knowledge and skill to students. It is important to find out the student's background during the initial portion of instrument training. New students with only basic maneuvering instruction provide a different set of challenges for the instructor than a more experienced pilot, for example, a pilot who has flown by instruments in a fixed-wing aircraft. The instructor must know who is being trained and what tendencies or trends may commonly be observed. Just as with any other instructional approach, instructor ability to identify and correct student error is based on the instructor's ability to cull from knowledge and experience. The instructor should reference the specific helicopter sections in the instrument flying handbook, which includes full discussions on helping an airplane pilot transition to helicopters. Additionally, the flight instructor must certify that the applicant is able to perform safely as an instrument pilot and is competent to pass the required practical test. Discuss with the student. Flying with the instruments is essentially visual flying with the flight instruments substituted for the various reference points on the helicopter and the natural horizon. The IFR helicopter pilot cannot reference the rotor tip path to the horizon but depend instead on the artificial horizon for a reference. There is no difference in helicopter control inputs between flying visual flight rules, VFR, and instrument flight rules, IFR. There is no outside reference and a pilot must trust what is presented on the helicopter instruments. Basic instrument training is intended to be a building block toward attaining an instrument rating. Ground instruction in a classroom environment, work with the student to begin developing a basic knowledge of the terms associated with attitude instrument flight. One way to capture the student's level of understanding is by requesting that the student identify the location of the instrument located in the helicopter, explain what each instrument is used for during attitude instrument flight, including its indications and limitations. The following instruments should be covered in the lesson plan, air speed indicator, altimeter, vertical speed indicator, VSI, attitude indicator, heading indicator, and turn indicator. Figure 13-1 the student should learn the names and locations of the pitot-static instruments, airspeed indicator, altimeter, and VSI, their use in pre-flight and airborne checks, and common errors. The student should learn the name and location of each gyroscopic instrument, attitude indicator, heading indicator, and turn indicator, their use in pre-flight and airborne checks, and common errors. The student should learn about the magnetic compass to include magnetic variation, magnetic dip, and compass deviation, as well as pre-flight checks, airborne checks, and common errors. Students have been known to be intimidated by instrument flying. Lack of experience and or poor training can contribute to this. An instructor's goal is to keep the training and the lesson plan as interesting as possible. Once the student understands what each instrument does, knows how to use it and develops a good cross-check, he or she will overcome the intimidation factor. The amount of time spent on each area is determined by the individual's ability to achieve a satisfactory level of proficiency. A portion of the instrument training may utilize a flight simulator, flight training device, or a personal computer-based aviation training device, p -cut it. Figure 13-2. The instructor must help the student form the correct scanning habits from the very first instrument flight, whether it is in the helicopter or in a flight simulator. Students have a tendency to stare at one instrument, which allows the other instruments to exceed tolerances very quickly. 
A VFR pilot must scan the instruments and gauges, as well as the sky, for traffic and obstructions. An IFR student must scan the gauges and instruments, and maybe the outside if there is anything to view. One common problem is attempting to stare at an instrument while a correction is being made. A student should be taught to scan, determine the issue or problem, make a control change, and then continue the scan. The result of the control change is checked on the next scan. The student must remember that inertia of the helicopter and all the changes require some finite period of time, so changes neither occur instantly nor would we usually wish to make abrupt changes of large magnitude. Flight instruction Once the student has an understanding of the instruments and knows the location of each, then the next logical step would be an actual flight. Figure 13.3, prior to the flight, the student should review all the instruments that will be used for the particular helicopter being flown and learn how to perform an instrument cross-check, instrument interpretation, and aircraft control. When teaching the student about flying a helicopter with reference to the flight instruments, the key is getting that student to understand that proper instrument interpretation is the basis for aircraft control. Skill, in part, depends on understanding how a particular instrument or system functions, including its indications and limitations. With this knowledge, the student can quickly interpret an instrument indication and translate that information into a control response. Start with simple tasks, and then progress to the more complex tasks. The student should be able to demonstrate performance of the following tasks at a satisfactory level. Straight and level flight, straight climbs, straight descents, turns, predetermined heading, timed, change of airspeed, 30 degrees bank, climbing and descending, and compass, unusual attitudes, emergencies, instrument takeoff perform a learning check by asking the student the location and function of each instrument used for attitude instrument flight. During flight, these demonstrations indicate if the student is able to maintain aircraft control during attitude instrument flight using both cross-check and instrument interpretation. Ensure the student knows what to do if the instrument fails and how that failure affects the scan being used. Allocate adequate time to train recovery from unusual attitudes. The student needs an understanding of the errors inherent in each instrument and common errors for the task to be performed. Instructional techniques instrument flying is simply composed of level turning climbing and descending instrument flight maneuvers. Do not overwhelm the student on the first instrument training flight. Use the building block technique by introducing one flight task at a time. Allow the student to fly and maintain. A set altitude. Then, introduce heading control and then airspeed control. The instructor's main duty is to divide the instrument procedures into small enough tasks to enable the student to grasp the concepts, acknowledge the desired outcomes, and understand the methods to use and when to use them to achieve the necessary performance. The student should understand that the helicopter never really flies straight and level. Only after much practice does it begin to appear to fly in that fashion. Due to the very small tolerances in the control system, each rotor blade flies a very slightly different path every revolution. Therefore, the helicopter pilot must continually make small corrections to achieve what passes for straight and level flight. This characteristic is the practical reason that IFR certified helicopters must have a fully functional autopilot or be crewed by two pilots for IFR operations. Helicopters are very controllable, but not necessarily stable. Therefore, cockpit organization and flight planning is very essential. Depending on the helicopter, some sort of crew training and resource management must be incorporated into this training. When training instrument flight to a transitioning airplane pilot, instructors should explain or reiterate the differences between an airplane and helicopter. For example, an airplane must be pointed up on the artificial horizon in order to climb, whereas a helicopter can climb quite well with its nose down. Conversely, an airplane is pointed down to descend but in a helicopter, the nose is raised and the collective is lowered to descend. Instrument flight can cause a student to become tense or get behind on tasks, which may cause a transitioning pilot to revert back to the first learned airplane habits. Often, a student may seem to be depressed from seeing so many errors during IFR flight training periods. That is when the instructor should congratulate the student because that is when flying really begins to improve. The student sees the errors and, with practice, learns the proper amount of control movement to correct those errors in a timely but controllable manner. Student tendencies Some common student tendencies are inconsistent or no scanning technique, staring too long at one flight instrument, not analyzing what they see, exaggerated flight control inputs, failure to correlate control inputs while discussion of scanning can be done in the classroom, the actual practice does not yield results until in flight. Depending on the instrument panel layout, have the student determine the most useful scan. According to the instrument flying handbook, no specific method of cross-checking scanning is recommended, the pilot must learn to determine which instruments give the most pertinent information for any particular phase of a maneuver. Watch the student's head and eyes to see if fixation is occurring.
If the student stares too long at one instrument, heading indicator, as an example, then other parameters are usually affected, altitude, airspeed, trim, etc. This can have a snowball effect as the student will eventually become overwhelmed. Ensure the student allows time to see and interpret the particular instrument, within the chosen scanning technique, and makes the necessary flight control input. Failure to take action may be a result of not processing the information present or absent in the scan of a particular instrument. When applying control input corrections, the student should use small inputs and allow time for them to take effect. Too often the student identifies and responds with the correct input but does not allow adequate time for the input to achieve the result. This can lead to overcontrolling. Initially, failure to correlate corresponding inputs is a common tendency. The student may need to be reminded of the associated control inputs normally used for the various instrument indications. Frequent breaks and discussion may be needed to allow the student time to process the information presented before continuing practical application. An example of this occurs when a student notes an increasing rate of climb and reacts by placing forward cyclic. Forward cyclic alone arrests the climb rate, but it also produces an increase in airspeed. In this example, however, during repeated attempts, the student repeatedly fails to make a corresponding reduction in power, and airspeed continually increases. The student may not correlate the impact of forward cyclic on airspeed, instead focusing only on rate of climb. Repeating the fault to the student while he or she continues to fly may result in sensory overload. Have the student transfer the controls, take a moment, then re-emphasize the learning point by demonstrating the correct control inputs with the student watching. Remind the student that the position of the flight controls never stays the same when flying a helicopter. Even flying straight and level requires change and adjustment to the flight controls and, as more fuel is used, the helicopter becomes lighter. Instrument flying is really precision flying and students will slowly start noticing small changes without pilot input and need to be reminded of that. Then, transfer aircraft control back to the student and have the student repeat the maneuver. Stress to the student the need to maintain a consistent scan technique and to maintain situational awareness of all indicators. Over time, the student's scan and response time will improve. During advanced instrument training, allowing the student to work through some of these issues can be beneficial to the student's confidence. However, the new student can quickly become overwhelmed and will not understand what is happening. Therefore, it is not good practice to allow the new pilot to become overly frustrated when first learning simple instrument tasks. Reference the Instrument Flying Handbook for discussion on these additional topics. Control instruments, performance instruments, navigation instruments, four-step process used to change attitude, establish, trim, cross-check, and adjust, apply the four-step process for pitch control, bank control, and power control, primary and supporting method, pitch control, straight and level flight, primary pitch, primary bank, primary yaw, and primary power, scanning techniques of attitude instrument flying, common errors of attitude instrument flying, fixation, mission, and emphasis more detailed information, as well as additional explanations can be found in the following references. Aviation Instructor's Handbook, Instrument Flying Handbook, Helicopter Flying Handbook, Instrument Procedures Handbook, Aeronautical Information Manual, AIM, Advanced Avionics Handbook Instructional Objectives continue to reinforce the basic standards throughout this training. Proper performance planning can be used to demonstrate the understanding and use of power settings in stabilized instrument flight techniques. Knowing the power settings used for climbs, level flight, and approaches as well as the various instrument flight modes decreases confusion and or searching by the student pilot. During use of the checklist, help the student understand the importance of checking items, such as flight instruments during hover checks. Also, tie in the importance of altimeter settings and the fluctuations that may occur when hovering EGA. The instructor should be explaining the reasons for the instrument takeoff following the maximum performance takeoff profile in order to gain altitude as quickly as possible to clear obstructions and the specified minimum instrument airspeed for that helicopter. Special care should be taken to fully explain helicopter approaches, required airspeeds, and the underlying reasons for those restrictions. The instructor's role is to identify, analyze, and make specific corrective suggestions to help the student. Pointing out parameter errors, such as, your heading is off, your altitude is off, your airspeed is off. Without providing detailed corrective action does not help the student. Assess the cause and provide methods or techniques to correct the situation. Whether a ground or flight training session, each training period should end with a thorough debriefing of what transpired and what will be covered in the next training period. Ask for the student's perception of the training. The student should not walk away unaware of what occurred during this training session, or what will be covered in the next session. Instructor tips, 
Review with the student how all the flight instruments operate and the actual location of each instrument inside the helicopter. Review and practice with the student what instruments are utilized during attitude instrument flight. Practice a good cross-check with the student. Practice with the student how to interpret the instruments during flight. Ensure the student uses smooth control inputs at all times during flight. Review with the student the common errors with each task and instrument. If appropriate, tell the student well ahead of time what will be covered, tasks to be flown, for the lesson plan and what the student should study or reference. Figure 13.4, Chapter Summary This chapter discussed all the common instrument references and concepts associated with attitude instrument flying and some common errors associated with helicopter flight. The chapter covered which flight tasks are accomplished during attitude instrument flying and how to accomplish those tasks with the instruments.